I'm Afshin Rattansky, and we're going underground back in the studio for this season's finale. Coming up on the show, as the 75th anniversary of the U.S. nuclear attack on Hiroshima and Nagasaki coincides with the world arguably never nearer to nuclear war, we speak to one of the world's greatest journalists and filmmakers, John Pilger, on the coronavirus pandemic, geopolitical brinkmanship, and the ongoing U.K. detention and torture of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. All this and more coming up in today's Going Underground, but first let's go straight to Sydney in Australia as New South Wales grapples with a spike in coronavirus cases. John Pilger, welcome to the show. The last time I spoke to you, you were telling us what the media here wasn't telling us. There had been a pandemic rehearsal in 2016 and there was a cover-up of it. What, uh, what's your take now? The tens of thousands of people in this country have died because of coronavirus. And how is it there in Australia? Well, it's a shocking state of affairs, isn't it? I mean, just last week, before the Public Accounts Committee in, in London, the whole shocking landscape was laid out that thousands of people had been thrown out of uh, hospitals back into care homes. It really is the kind of making of, a, of an expendable society where experts talk blithely, as, as uh, one of them did in this particular report, that 12,000 12, excess deaths would have happened. <clears throat> another expert said, no, wait a minute. If there's another spike, it's likely in the UK to go up to 35,000. Now, we're not talking about the total of coronavirus victims. We're talking about people who die in care homes who were thrown out of hospital. I think that's one of the great scandals of this, that uh, Public Health England, in effect, <clears throat> in April, emptied hospitals of all non-coronavirus -coro victims, including cancer patients, cardio patients, neurology patients, people who needed serious attention. And here we now have the president of the Royal College of Surgeons, arguably the most uh, conservative uh, of, the, of the Royal Colleges, saying with a hint of panic in his voice, look, we can't go on like this, because if there's another spike, we're going to lose thousands of more people so what this has been is just, uh, and they knew it. They knew in what, what came out at this Public Accounts Committee hearing is, is that Public Health England, and therefore <coughs> um, the, all those executives in the Department of Health, Health and Social uh, Care, uh, they knew that all these elderly people and people with disabilities and people in care homes or people were at risk if they were left, if they weren't in hospital. But still, they dumped them. They threw them out of hospital. Uh, and, you, you know, we, we one doesn't want to add to the, to the hysteria about this. And I'm not trying to do that. But I think there's something very grave and disturbing, disquieting about all of this, that so many people, so many vulnerable, elderly, disabled people were thrown out of hospital and didn't get the care in care homes, and many of them died on their own. That, that's a national shame. Viewers can watch your latest film, uh, The Dirty War, on, on the NHS, of course. I would say Public Health England and Boris Johnson and his government completely refute that they deliberately sent thousands, tens of thousands of people to their deaths because of that care home policy. Now, as you, as you imply, doctors and surgeons, as you refer to, are warning that many tens of thousands will be killed by a second wave because of the NHS shutdown of cancer services. Why do you think uh, less is heard about the impact on other diseases of the response to the pandemic here in Britain with the NHS? I think it's got to go straight back to, to Simon Stevens and his, and his cabal running, running the show. 
that these people have enormous power. Uh, St Stevens presided over uh, perhaps the greatest disabling of bed capacity in the NHS since 1948, since the beginning of the NHS. And here, here uh, the, the NHS, the, he had plenty of warnings. Not only uh, was the, uh, the results of a drill in 2016 ignored, but going back earlier than that, people were warning the, uh, the Cameron government that if the Lansley so-called reform, that is, the Health and Social Care Act that effectively set up uh, intense privatization and fragmentation of the health service, if they happened and there was a great public emergency, such as a pandemic, then it would be a catastrophe. They were warned. There were so many warnings. There were so many experts to warn them. Uh, and none of this was heeded. That should not pass. That really should not pass. That, that, that now where we can pick up a newspaper and casually read that there will be up to 35,000 excess deaths. I like that expression, excess deaths of people, of cancer patients, cardio patients, and other people who needed serious diagnosis and serious treatment who were denied it. Why? Well, Simon Stevens would no doubt point to the fact that bed numbers were going down before he took over. And you're not seriously saying that, uh, that there are people weaponizing coronavirus. Yeah. That, They're not weaponizing coronavirus to ideologically privatize the National Health Service, are they? Well, of course they are. They're privatizing as we go on. I mean, their, their utter ruthlessness uh, in, uh, in privatizing it at the very height of this this disaster with uh, 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 with 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 uh, companies taking over PPE uh, distribution and uh, testing and so on when all that should be in regional public health authorities which of course themselves were disabled by the uh, first by the Cameron government and then later by all those who followed. And yes, Simon Stevens wasn't there at the beginning, that's true, but he was in charge of this monolith, which had the lowest bed, when I made the film Dirty War on the NHS, it had the lowest bed capacity in Europe. And that was last year, 2019, on the eve of this pandemic. Um, <clears throat> and he was knighted along the way. Uh, people have to be called to account, uh, politicians and officials. Uh, they have to be called to account because it can't happen again, surely. I mean, it's okay to go and stand out and clap the NHS and quite right too. Absolutely heroic people uh, doing their best without PPE uh, in the most extraordinary circumstances but also under cover of that, that great warmth felt towards the N NHS was a political project that dismantled it, has dismantled it from within, and it's still going on. Suddenly Boris Johnson is the champion of the NHS. This is ridiculous. These people, these people, all of them colluded in the 2012 Health and Social Care Act, which absolutely ravaged the first public health system in the world uh, and changed it in character and left it prone for when something like this came along, of which they were warned. Well, the government is giving more money to the NHS. It's not only Boris Johnson who says the NHS is one of the most important parts of uh, British civic society. It's the Murdoch Press, it's the BBC. All of these institutions have been clear that far from wanting to dismantle the NHS, they wanted to protect it. And they celebrated those like a former, like an army veteran who walked around the garden to raise money. 
Uh, I know that one case um, concerned you about a psychologist, I think Wendy Peak, who's had to uh, fundraise, I think, online for her cancer care. Do you see this as, uh, as the major hidden yes. context to coronavirus in, yes. in this country, ideologically driven privatization? Wendy Peak case is, 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 is really remarkable, isn't it? Uh, I and many others have contributed to to Wendy's uh, campaign, run absolutely wonderfully by her her daughters. But this this is somebody with who's lost an eye. She had a cancer in a melanoma, uh, in a very unusual one. But but all that is within within the expertise and certainly within the remit of the NHS. Why wasn't she treated? Why wasn't she treated? There are other Wendy Peaks, and perhaps they, they don't have the same dynamic family to be able to support them uh, all over the country. Health Secretary Matt Hancock says that what's needed in the NHS is harnessing technological development. He says, and many viewers who may have... Uh, uh, and liked the way that telephone access to their GP surgery was actually an improvement on the waiting times for appointments. What do you make of Matt Hancock's uh, desire to modernize the NHS so it's truly harnessing technology this time? Look, I don't say this lightly. Matt Hancock is discredited. He couldn't get his figures straight talking about the number testing. You remember, it was 10,000 one day, and then not quite. He couldn't get his figures straight about PPE equipment arriving here. Uh, but what his pa great passion is, is tech. He loves technology. And he loves it so much that he appeared in an advertorial in the Evening Standard, uh, paid for by a private tech company, Babylon Health, which has got contracts from the NHS. What he said was, which horrified uh, most doctors, was that uh, GP consultations would be now by default um, uh, online. So yet another uh, remote. Uh, the, the doctor wouldn't actually see you. The doctor would see you virtually. Well, yes, that works for some. It works, certainly works for everyone under the age of 30 uh, who don't have anything wrong with them. Uh, and it certainly might work for, for people who just want a prescription for something that is very easy to identify. But it does not work as, uh, as, as uh, Dr. Phil Whitaker, uh, distinguished GP, explained in my film. It does not work in the consulting room, when you want to find out, when someone is trying to tell you something, but they're not sure of the words, they're not perhaps too articulate, it's their body language that actually tells you what's wrong with them. And, and, it's, and it's the wise doctor who can see his patient or her patient and, and understand that, that can get a diagnosis right. All doctors would tell you that, good doctors. And here is Hancock with his latest wheeze, his latest grotesque wheeze. Well, Hancock denies and refutes any corruption regarding any particular tech company, whether it be Babylon or, or any other. John Pilger, I'll stop you there. More from legendary journalist and filmmaker after this short break.